In an op-ed, President Biden called for sweeping reforms for the Supreme Court, including term limits and code of ethics. The court definitely needs to be fixed, but it'll take more than an op-ed to make that happen. I've got Ring of Fire's Fair and Cousins with me to talk about it. Yeah, this is, this is an election issue. I mean, this is just being put out there so we can have people get mad about the Supreme Court. And the problem is that they're really, they're kind of really missing the big picture. I mean, this isn't going to, this, I mean, people who really believe this is going to happen are, are it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, let's pick it up and talk. About but but I, I, I do agree with what he says in this op-ed. And I think, honestly, most people probably do, because uh, term limits for the Supreme Court has obviously been something for many years. Yeah. Yeah. The public says, yes, overwhelmingly, let's not give these weirdos a job for life. Mm, that mm. That's not a good idea, no matter what industry you're in but especially a situation like this where they can essentially overturn the executive branch, the legislative branch. Let's make sure that these people don't stay in there until their brains turn into pudding. Well, Ginsburg, I mean, my God. I mean, did they have, I hauled her out of there in a wheelchair, you know, on a gurney. And, and people were upset when everybody said, hey, if you resign, we, we could actually we could, not. And then, and then, and then there's always didn't. the fights yeah. saying, how dare you? Well, this has zero chances of being approved. I mean, you've got to divide vice of Congress, they're not going to allow for this kind of thing. There's the, the, the idea of um, saying now that there's something so different about 200 years of history. You see, I mean, this it kind of, as I was reading this article, I got, I got to thinking about the Warren Court. The conservatives went crazy with the Warren Court, if you think about it. I mean, there, it, was, it, it was all about separation of church and state. It was all about, everything was about civil rights, voting rights. They stu- 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 struck down segregation, police arrest. Proceed. These were all good things. But the right went crazy about it. And what if they had raised it then? I mean, they, didn't, there was, they knew then it wasn't even a possibility. Matter of fact, the last time that this is even, uh, that there's even been any, I think it was 30 years ago, Congress, they passed a bill changing their pay rate. The last time there was any yeah. kind of amendment to the Constitution, they changed it for themselves. And then they said, we can't do anything else, right? Yeah, and, and it really is difficult. I don't think people fully appreciate how difficult it is to get those amendments yeah. passed. I mean, the process you have to go through and, and like you pointed out, because of the division with our elected leaders, uh, much less division as we've talked about with actual people, mm-hmm. the division mm-hmm. is in Washington, the division is in the state legislatures. And because of that, you're never going to get your two thirds or three quarters that you need to agree on this because for conservatives right now, that means two of your justices are out the door. Bye. You got to go. And of course they're not going to do that. And, and the, I mean, the Democrats wouldn't do it if, if it was in their position. So, but again, term limits are good. A- and the code of ethics, this is the only court in the country yeah, I, I that doesn't with, have I, I to abide by that. a code I mean, of ethics. I agree with both of That's those That's crazy. There's no, there's no problem with term limits. I think the proposal was that every two years, uh, a president would appoint a, 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 a Supreme Court judge who would sit for 18 years, yeah. I, I think is what it was. And that's not unreasonable. Um, and it certainly isn't unreasonable to say you have to have your own code of ethics that you have to follow and you got to play, play, play the same game everybody else does. But I don't, you know, I guess this is purely an election talking point. You I know, think we're so. going to change the Supreme Court. It's bullshit. Well, well, They're not, me- there, there's no way that, z- I give this zero maybe even less than zero of happening. But I guess you can stand up and talk about it. I want to do something about the Supreme Court. Right, because yeah. you know that your side is energized about how much they dislike the right. Supreme Court for obvious reasons. But listen, here's what I tell you makes me mad about this. When Biden came into office, the big issue at the time was you've got to expand the Supreme Court, which is something Congress actually has the authority to do without and, going through the Constitution. Right. Biden sat on it for a year, and then he said, okay, you guys are still yelling at me. I'll, I'll create a commission and they're going to look into it and then we'll see what our options are. The commission came back quietly months and months later and said, don't touch the court. So Biden had the opportunity. He had the public by his side to actually do something and, and just didn't do it. He made the decision just not to do it. So this is hollow for me. But Farron, it wouldn't be anything. I mean, honestly, Biden has never, ever pointed towards the need to change the Constitution. He, he just hasn't. He's, he's been very conservative on that issue. And I think what they're doing, saying to him now, look, you're lame duck. 
Uh, you got a speech you can make. You can get everybody jazzed up about this. But the pitiful thing is there are really people that are going to hear this and say, yeah, this is a real possibility. And if we elect Kamala Harris and we put Democrats, this is going to happen. It's just la la land thinking. And, and I just get, and I think maybe some of it has to do with uh, the way the corporate media talks about these issues. Yeah. They, like, this really is a possibility. This is not even a close possibility. Donald Trump thought he could pick a winner when he selected Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate. But Republicans, they disagree with his choice. Vance has had a rough start to his campaign, and now many in the GOP are second-guessing decision-making by Trump. But, you know, I think when I'm reading about J.D. Vance and the people that are critical of him, you know where most of it comes from? Is the war pimps, the war whores, the Republican war whores hate this guy. Because he, was, he has a tendency to talk about isolationism. He, you know, he would shut down Ukraine. He'd be glad to shut down Ukraine in a second. He's hugely anti-war. And so the, the, the missile industry, the defense industry, hates a guy like this. And that's where a lot of this is being generated. See, I, I think for me, it's J.D. Vance, his past comments, not just about Donald Trump, which he's clumsily tried to defend and say, well, well, I, I bought into the media. No, you, you cashed in on it. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, yeah. but, but it's, yeah. it's the comments about women that are giving the Republicans so many headaches right now. You know, the childless cat ladies. When you're talking about the demographic where your ticket was already suffering the most. And in these polls that we see where you've got these swing state voters, if women flip away from Trump, just a small percentage of them, they lose, why and he, he is not attracting why, anybody why new would right he now. Make statements like "liberal cat, cat lady women." Because I mean, wh wh where does that in his mind? Where does that move him? I mean, doesn't that just? I mean, the MAGA group. I mean, he, he's going to he's going to shore up the MAGA voters. Yeah. The question is, is he there to incite them? Is he there to ex excite them? Is he there to get them to the polls? Is he there to be another mouthpiece for Trump? Because th that's what he's that's what he's become. So what well, do you do with that? The reason he makes comments like that, just like the reason he made comments about hating Donald Trump and Trump being America's Hitler back in 2016, <laughs> is because at the time, <laughs> that's where the money was. Yeah. Now yeah. look, you got a lot of these macho male influencers yeah. who make a lot of money going out there on social media talking about how, how much they hate women, women you belong in the kitchen. You, how, do and, and do, I how do you do that and win an election? Well, I mean, can you, I mean, your, your wife hears that? My God, how, how does that win an election is what I'm trying to say. I mean, well, don't well, you? Right, but a lot of these comments were from 2021 and 2022 before he announced he was running for Senate. Even back then, how did it win an election? That's what I'm trying to get it, to. It was, it was more quiet back then. No, yeah. but, well, his was a very popular race, but he was still running off the high of his book, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and his reformation. And now, oh, I've seen the light. I love Trump. But he, to me, is like so many other folks. He is the political chameleon. Yeah. If it's more expedient for me to be this today, I'll be this. If yeah. tomorrow it's different, I'll be that thing. Yeah. Charlie Crist, I think, is one of the best oh, examples yes, of that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and Charlie, this guy that's is well a Charlie put. Crist. That's well, like, that's very well I'm a put, Republican, right? and by God, I do Republican things. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. No, today I'm a Democrat, by God, <laughs> and I am the best Democrat there like is. Joe, Joe Brzezinski. <laughs> I, Scarborough, he's another great example, too. I mean, the guy used to go to Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago for parties. I know, I know. But it's, well, it's, okay, I, I, you know, I don't care. I honestly don't <laughs> care. If I were Trump, I'd be, I'd be looking at the guy saying, why do I have any criticism? Why don't I have a ghost that just disappears, doesn't say anything? Let me say all the stupid stuff I say every day. Why do you get another guy in there to talk about liberal cat-like women? <laughs> just crazy to me. Well, and, and you know, Trump is the guy who wants the spotlight. And I think Vance is not a guy who's going to usurp that because he's not as charismatic. He's and, a good speaker. Now, well, I mean, he's a good know, speaker. We'd be foolish not to admit But but he's, he's not like, <laughs> "Hey, here I am." Cuz there were plenty of people Trump was considering. Yeah that are also attention hogs. Who, who else would you put up there besides? I, I think the smartest thing Trump could have done would have been Nikki Haley. I, I, think, I think if I, he picked Nikki yeah, Haley, it's right. over already. I think you're right. Uh, I mean, polls already showed, by the way, that Haley alone, as the actual nominee, would have beaten Biden by nine points. Right nine. now. Nine. Wow. <laughs> uh, what people aren't looking at, and the Democrats really need to pay attention to this, 
Hillary won the popular vote by three million votes, okay? Yeah. And the media kept saying, it's done, it's done, it's done, look at these polls. They were looking at general polls. She lost in the Electoral College. And if they're not careful, that's where Harris is going to lose, too. Yeah. Because the numbers are not changing that much in the Electoral College. I can just, as of this morning, now maybe they've, something's happened, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. The, the numbers are holding pretty tight in the swing state. Yeah, her, her approval has gone way up, eight points in a week, yeah. and obviously $200 million. Um, but I think, you know, if we're getting into that, focus on North Carolina, focus on Arizona, right. Right. Uh, Wisconsin, right. and Pennsylvania. Don't be fooled by the flashy things of Texas and Florida. Can we what flip them? What is that? What it's is not going to happen. Don't you, we're, we're talking, you, actually see, you actually see columnists talking about how Florida is getting right. Bullshit. There's a million more Republican registered voters in Florida. Yeah. And they say, as you were pointing out earlier, there's this, uh, uh, the, the, what is the community? The, the villages. The villages. There's 50% of them are going, who cares? There's no way they're going to cover. It's a tiny little spot in the middle of Florida that outside the villages, nobody actually cares right. about. Right. They're not going to carry Florida. They're not going to carry Texas. And it's in the most liberal part of Florida to begin with. So yeah. chill out. Go to where you can win. Yeah. And it, I agree. Arizona, North Carolina, those swing states you got to pay attention to. But this is, this is lulling probably people even watching this program. They look at the polls and they say, oh, Harris is pulling ahead in polls. Well, there's two things. It's a sugar high, for one thing. Secondly, those general polls don't mean anything. And we've talked, we do yeah. polls all the time. Yeah. And we say this all the time. The polls you got to look at in, in this kind of situation are going to be the swing state polls. Yeah. And there's just not that much happening. This, this is going to come down to four or five states. Yeah. And your uh, idea, it's a tight one. Your idea, concentrate on two of those states you think you can pull together and go after it. Yep. Thanks for joining me, okay? Thank you. That's all the time we have, but all these segments are going to be posted right here on this channel in the coming weeks, so make sure you're subscribed. I'm Mike Papantonio, and this has been America's Lawyer, where we tell you stories every week that corporate media aren't allowed to tell you. They won't tell you because their advertisers won't let them tell you the stories. Or, from a political standpoint, some sides are just so, just so tribal. If you color outside the lines for Democrat, then you're not accepted. If you color outside the line for Republican, you're not accepted. We don't have that problem on this program, as you've probably figured out. Thanks.